Okay, guys. Wow, it's been an amazing two days, hasn't it? Well, we're going to close with a conversation between myself and Glenn. Uh, so Glenn just said to me, would it be okay if we did a... This is not a term we use in South Africa. It's quite a common U.S. term. It's a fireside chat. <laughs> it's, quite a, it's quite a nice term, though. So Glenn and I are going to have a fireside chat while the chairs come up. You can welcome Glenn up to the stage again. Thank you, Glenn. Oh, we just had plant trouble. <laughs> the plant's gone. Glenn, thank you. All right. So we thought what would be quite fun is, um, seeing as we're a tech business and we both kind of like tech, is let's, let's, let's jump onto ChatGPT. <laughs> we're sitting there together. We got on ChatGPT and we said, right, what should Stephen ask Glenn, basically, was the question we asked. And we got, a, we got a whole list of questions, so we're going to have a look at what's interesting. Uh, before we get into the, the chat GPT questions, Glenn, I want to ask you, um, what do you enjoy most about what you do? Well, this is pretty good. Like, like uh, meeting uh, everyone and uh, hearing um, your stories, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's still surreal, um, and I, I've heard it for, for quite some time, but it's surreal to think that a science experiment, which it was in 2009, um, turned into this. I mean, it was literally all the, I, I was 42 at the time, and, uh, but I had enough business experience, um, enough entrepreneurial experience um, to recognize that there were certain things that ingredient-wise had the potential to work. Um, but if I, if, if I was going to go all in and, and I was just, you know, you know, 42, you, you think you're getting old. If, if you're 42, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but when you're 57, you go, eh, well, it really wasn't that old. But, um, but you, you sit there and go, this is my last shot. So I better, I better put it all on the line, uh, to see if this thing will work. And, um, and, and then it worked. And then it's like, it's now I hear you know, how many people, you know, come up and how it's changed their life. And I, what, believe me, this was not, I mean, I, I played a role, there's no doubt, in sort of developing the model, um, but this is, you, you made it work for you. I just built a platform um, that I thought would work, and without, you know, leaders like, you know, yourself and Brent and Sheila and all the other folks that are in the organization, we, EXP would not be what it is. EXP is simply a platform that fortunately I was able to attract a few good leaders uh, to come in and then really blow it up. So an, an interesting, I'd love to actually hear your answer to this question because it can be answered in different ways. The question is gonna be what, what is the disruption that EXP has brought to the real estate industry? Because you could go a number of ways with that question. You could look at the tech, you could look at the psychology behind the model, you could, I mean, in, in, in truth, what do you think has it been that has created this massive movement? Well, there were two ingredients. Um, two, there were things that had to come together, and, and there was a perfect timing to it. Um, you know, I, I alluded to it yesterday, but you know, 2009, uh, the iPhone had only been out for a year. Uh, when I got my license in 2002, uh, you know, who, who was a real estate professional in 2002? You got to, okay, you remember what high-speed internet was? You actually listened to it. You know, and, and, and you know, that was, that, was, that was, you know, it was this dial-up connection. Um, and, uh, and even, he, well, and I, uh, I know that high-speed internet here was even slower because there was, it was, there was like not the cables running across the ponds and all the other stuff. Um, and so you, you, the, where high-speed internet existed was in the office. And so that was 2002. But by 2009, we'd finally got to the first time really in the history of mankind where internet was, high-speed internet was pretty distributed. And so that was the first thing. So then the, the second part was I had already identified as an agent, 
because I I've been mentored by business people about the fact, the reason why you own a business, I mean, there's a few reasons, but the one that primarily people own a business for, with, uh, for is, is so that it actually can outlast your ability personally to actually go out and earn income. And we're sold, and I, and I say we're sold, how many of you were sold on the idea that when you got your real estate license, you had a real estate business? Okay, so so the, the, the idea is you're sold, hey, I've, you're, you're, you now are, you're in the real estate business at a minimum, but some of us were told we, we now have a business, but the rules of the business that have been set up were not business rules. Uh, they were indentured servitude rules. And uh, if you didn't make a sale, you were out of business, and so that's not really a business. So the business fundamentally owned you, you did not own a business. And so that was sort of my sort of what juxtaposition of, of justifying, one, I had to put food on the table, a roof over the head. You know, that's what most of us are getting into this business to do. But the second thing is, what happens if something happens to me? Um, God forbid I get into 20 car accidents. Um, I, I, I was thinking of just one. <laughs> and... Um, you know, but if, if I couldn't be gainfully employed, what would happen to my family? And, and that was at my personal responsibility to make sure that they were taken care of. And so, and I've always had in the back of my mind this basic thought, which is if I have a challenge, you know, and, and it's not being solved in the marketplace, there's probably a lot more individuals like me that if there was a solution, they would they would gravitate toward it. And so this is sort of, that's my entrepreneurial sort of mindset is why just solve it for me? Like I could go start a, a, just a business and I could then you know, employ agents, but it didn't, if it, if it doesn't serve other people beyond just me, it, it's minimally scalable. It still requires a whole bunch of effort. So I think at the end of the day, it was really about how do I get off the hamster wheel myself and then recognizing there were some other companies out there. There was a, a company called Exit Realty, Keller Williams. Of course, a few of us were with Keller Williams back in, in the day. And Keller Williams had this amazing, amazing profit share system on paper. Um, and, uh, and I bought into it hook, line, and sinker. I mean, I, I went and I was, wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself the Brent Gove of Keller Williams, but I was certainly very active. I jumped on planes. I... I met with people, I built a group, and in, my, in three years I had 184 people in my group, and then I found out that my profit share was only $6,000, uh, which felt like 6,000 rand. Uh, uh, it was, for the amount of effort that I put into it, it was pretty small, and, and so that's when I left. I said, this, this isn't working, and that's when I said, we've got to do revenue share, not profit share. And, uh, but because of the internet, by 2009, we could get rid of the physical bricks and mortar layer. And so then it's like, holy smokes, we've got some extra margin here. Um, and, and, and we could actually take this margin that would normally have gone to the broker owner. And why don't we actually put it back in the hands of our agents and actually build a true retirement type infrastructure? So that was, and, and, and I really, and I say this with all honesty. I built the company to be the company that had it existed, I would have went to work for, I would have not have created the company. And because I would have been a lifer at EXP, I would be a lifer today with, without a doubt, but that's pretty self-serving because I'm the guy who started it. But, um, but if that company had existed, I would have been a lifer at that company because it would have answered the fundamental need of a you know, young entrepreneur that you know, doesn't come from money, doesn't come from you know extreme wealth. I had been exposed to it, but my dad lost it all by the time I went to college. Um, so I got a taste of what it looked like. Um, but um, you know, I wanted to build something that would actually take care of the masses of real estate agents who are not truly business professionals. What? What? Thank you. Has it surprised you? I mean, uh, you know, you. You obviously conceived this concept. Has the success surprised you? Yeah, by about 
80,000 more agents than I expected we'd ever have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a story. Um, okay, so you're a, a disruptor. Uh, I think Glenn will go down in history as the man who disrupted the real estate industry in the 21st century. It's just a point of history. Um, You obviously do have, you're bent, you're wired, you're designed to kind of look into the future. I think that's, you probably are more gifted at that than most people. So as you look into the future now, what do you see as the next big change or changes coming to the real estate industry? You know, I, I think the reality is, is we are in the biggest inflection point in the history of well, our, certainly our history while, while we're alive, AI and, and what we're seeing right now, I mean, since, you know, about a year and a half, two years ago, when ChatGPT first got introduced, and now it's been upgraded and all the other things. By the way, I bought a lot of NVIDIA stock last year. Yay. Um, so, um, but, uh, um, you know, AI is going to literally change the game. Eventually, you will, your, your customers... We'll, we'll be talking, and when I say they'll be talking, it'll actually be their AI talking, talking to your AI, scheduling appointments, getting ready, and then you'll, um, calendar items will show up in your calendar as to where you're going to show up to show a property with bio information so you can have a human-to-human -human conversation. But the, the reality is that AI is going to change the game entirely. Um, you know, as a real estate agent, you know, we, we look at things like CRMs, and uh, I think in the next two to three years, I think CRMs, the way we think of CRMs, will go away entirely. I think that if you actually put your database into an AI, the AI will start to actually communicate on your behalf with your customers and keep them up to date, and it still will require you to make some phone calls, but it'll probably send you your reminders or even make the phone calls on your behalf and just connect you um, with, with, the, with the consumer. So I think AI is going to change so much. Um, the fact is, is that there will be a, a, a virtual Steven that will be rendered online that the consumer won't be able to tell the difference between talking to it versus talking to you. And, and they'll love it because they'll be able to talk to you for hours to, to download um, the, the, just all of the information that you normally wouldn't have the time to actually invest in that conversation because you've got other things going on. But they want to learn about the market, what it means to buy a home, what it means about renovation, what, what's the closing process, all of these things that take time, you'll be, this, and, and the sooner you can create your digital twin and start experimenting with your digital twin, that's going to be the next game changer. So you know, how many of you are actively using AI in your business right now? Okay. How many, just based on what I said, are actively going to use AI? <laughs> Hopefully a few more. Um, you know, it's, you know, I, I think I was here, or I heard somebody talking about marketing luxury property. Are, do you guys use Matterport cameras here? Yeah, yeah, we've got Matterports, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, you know, but here in the next little bit, and actually it's funny, Brent, about a year and a half, two years ago, he was involved with a, a company or promoting or, or a, a company called Wormhome to Old Technology. Remember that? But that is coming. Like the ability, to, and so what that technology was, it's kind of an early version, but eventually you're going to literally with AI along with the Matterport scans and the whole night, you'll be able to actually do virtual open houses where people put on the, you know, the new Apple Vision Pros or their Oculus headsets, and you'll be able to walk through the home and point out the kitchens and the appliances, and the appliances will run, and you'll be able to see the water coming out of the shower, and all this stuff will be sort of super interactive and engaging, and it will make you guys get a few foreign buyers in Cape Town, I know. I've heard, heard rumors that people buy from out of area. Um, you'll be able to do, sell all these properties fully remote, and they'll, 
actually know the property intimately before they ever get here to be in the home that they have already closed on um, here locally. So I, I think there's just so much coming down in terms of, you know, AI, this, uh, you know, what, what's it going to be like to, you know, digital photography. Uh, obviously, you got the drones and all the other stuff, but it's pretty crazy. I did a, uh, I took a photo uh, um, of uh, in, inside your home. And actually, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. But I, I, I had it uh, describe on ChatGPT. Have you ever taken a photo and then had it? Oh, I didn't it? know you could do that. Oh, yeah. So, so you take a photograph and then you ask ChatGPT to describe the room. Yeah. Um, so, so this is, so the, uh, so here, you'll, you'll recognize this picture. So this, so, so that, that's, that's your yeah. living area, right? Yeah. Okay. Not, so, so then not, I. Now be kind because so, my wife so, designed yeah, so that I, room. Um, so I said, uh, describe this room in a real estate agent's voice in Cape Town, South Africa. So, and then it says, welcome to this elegant living space. This is your home, by the way. So, an epitome of sophistication. Well, I, I really need the South African accent for all of our American Canadian friends because you guys have such the, the best accents. Um, but uh, the, the epitome of sophistication nestled in the heart of Cape Town. This room exudes a tranquil charm with its high ceilings adorned with unique white beams adding a grandeur yet airy feel to the area. Warm ambient lighting cascades from the classic lantern style chandeliers casting a welcoming glow over the tastefully appointed furnishings. This is this is from a photograph, from from one photograph, and uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and then you know I could ask it to okay now sell me this this house, and it would give me like it's pretty. I mean it's crazy. It's it's. Just Babe, when we sell the house, our realtor is going to be Glenn Sanford. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my accent. Maybe it'll help to sell a property in South Africa. I don't know. So did you know that you could upload a photograph to ChatGPT and have it describe? I didn't know that. Unbelievable. Um, okay, Glenn. So um, we look into the future. I'm sure you've read. Uh, I think it was Jim Collins, Good to Great. Yeah. And and he said one of the um, one of the dangers is that companies become unbelievably good. They've disrupted something, they achieve huge levels of success, but very few then make that transition to a multi-generational great company. And it, it reminded me of something that Gene said last year when he was, uh, he said many EXP agents get to kind of 2,000 agents in their rev share group and then they stop. They stop growing. They've, they've got good, their income's good, they're enjoying it, but there's that, there's, there's just a, a, there's a loss of the urgency. How do we stop that from happening to, to EXP? And on the positive side, how do we take EXP in the next 20 years into what is great? Well, uh, yeah, great, great question. So um, Jim Collins, obviously a great author, and he's written, you know, a number of, number of books. Um, there's another author that I'm a, a big fan of, uh, Fred Reichheld, he wrote The Ultimate Question 2.0, Winning on Purpose. And, and he and Jim Collins have a little bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a battle, but in his book, Winning on Purpose, he talked about how to be so consumer-centric, how you love on your customer, in our case, how do you love on your agents so that you ultimately get to where you want to go. And so um, he actually, uh, Fred actually sits on our board, on EXPI's board, so I, you know, I, I, we got him to do a keynote. I followed him. He's on our board, and and what's interesting is he has um, followed companies, good to great companies versus his NPS companies, and the NPS-based companies actually outperform sort of the good to great companies um, in a number of categories, and it really comes down to this idea of intently listening to the field intently listening to the agents and creating real feedback loops so as an organization, we can actually entrepreneur on what we hear. So this is, you, you, you see this, you've heard of our, if you haven't seen it yet, you, you should have, but you'll see the net promoter question, which is on a scale of zero to 10, how likely would you refer a friend or colleague join EXP Realty? And then what most prompted you to give us that score? Now. For us, we've got, I think about it in the same way as, 
as um, almost like the Amazon phrase that I used yesterday, we want the value proposition of eXp to be so good that it'd be irresponsible to hang your license anywhere else. And there's, there's two parts to that. One is, obviously, you need the promoters. You need the promoters. But you can't rest on your promoters. If you don't improve your infrastructure and your ecosystem, then eventually the promoters are going to get tired and it will flatten out and it will sort of do. So for us, it's, it's, it's being really intentional on continuing to iterate and then making sure we always bring more people that, are, that can help us get to the next level. But there's, you know, the new leaders, the next leaders are going to grow those next groups of a of of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and you aggregate those people together, and eventually you've got groups of 10,000, you've got groups of 30,000, you have groups of 90,000 as on our way to, you know, a million agents and 100 countries. So that's, you know, so, and one of the cool things that's, that one of the really amazing things is that the, the value prop that we articulated in, in the U.S., because that's where we started, it translated 100% to Canada. Canada, of course, we call it our 51st state. <laughs> just, just uh, um, the, uh, uh, but the, uh, but, but it translated well to Canada. But we have very similar systems. We have multiple listing services and other things. But outside of the U.S. and Canada, there's virtually no multiple listing services. We're at the mercy of the portals, the Property 24s, the Real Estate .coms .aus, the the um, uh, right moves and, and all of these other, other things. But the real estate agent's pain is exactly the same, which is there's no way in a traditional model to get off the hamster wheel of real estate, uh, of out there listing and selling real estate. And the only way that they n have learned how to retire is to take their money from sales and put it into rental properties and put it into other investments. Nothing wrong with that. But that means they've got to master another set of skills that, by the way, most people suck at being an investor t in the early days. So, um, you know, with, with the, the idea that we can actually take non-business people, because most real estate agents are salespeople, not business people, but give them the benefits of owning a business, um, that solves the biggest pain point, in my opinion, that real estate will ever have. So you've touched on the global side and, and your expansion. I'd like to actually move the conversation there. Um, I was a, a very grateful beneficiary of the, of the new thrust to go international. As I understand it, you were in Canada, the US, uh, Australia, and the UK, but it never really aggressively expanded internationally. And then on came Michael Valdez. Maybe you can talk through that. But just talk us through why, why the, the new emphasis on global a few years ago, and then we can maybe discuss where it's going. Um, one is every major brand does go global. That's not the real reason. It's that we had agents from all over EXP that literally said, hey, can we take it to Mexico? Can we take it to the UK? Can we take it to Poland? Can we take it to Turkey? Australia, South Africa, France, we had agents that, from all over the world that are in the U.S. And so we had major demand of people wanting to take it there. And, uh, and that, you know, 2020, we brought on Michael Valdez. Michael Valdez helped us get to, you know, another 18 countries he's added. We've got another, we've got at least two or three more countries we'll add this year. Um, one of them we've got I think we'll start with probably start with almost a thousand agents day one because we've got now brokerages in other countries that are actually wanting to convert and 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 then and then help us grow in those countries. Um, but uh, the 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 reality is if we think about the U.S., um, there's 1.6 million realtors in the U.S. The largest brand in the U.S. is Keller Williams. They have about 150,000 agents. So about 10% market share in the U.S. So I, I sort of think about the idea that it's, it's kind of arrogant to think that we'll get much beyond 10%. You know, the biggest brand in the U.S. is 10%. Um, but there's 20 million real estate agents worldwide. And, and if you think about it from that perspective, if we only got 5% of, of agents, and I think this, this model works 
well for, for more than that. I mean, I think, it's, I think it could be 10, 15, 20% of the worldwide market, but at 5%, we're at 1 million agents. The beautiful thing about the model, of course, is that when you expand to a country like South Africa, for example, there are South Africans all over the world. And already we've seen now EXP launch in South Africa, then they open in Dubai, and we've had a number of people in my team that, boom, from South Africa, we've got agents in Dubai now. So when you expand into South Africa because of the model, you're not just expanding into South Africa, you're then expanding into the rest of the world through the influence of those agents in South Africa. And if I could just exhort those of you here today, you know, find out where EXP is open. We're open in 24 countries internationally. There's going to be three more this year. I can't wait to find out what those are. And just ask, spend five seconds asking yourself, do I know anyone in those countries? Why don't I send them an email and say, do you know any ambitious, open-minded, successful real estate agents? They say, yeah, I know three of them. Okay, please put them in touch with me. There's, I want to talk business with them. Next thing, you might have an international business and be earning revenue share in euros or pounds or, or whatever, or US dollars. It's a phenomenal opportunity. Right, Glenn? I haven't even started on ChatGPT's oh, by, questions. By the way, you want to know a little trivia? I, I, I sold Kirby vacuum cleaners at one time. Oh, that, that explains everything. <laughs> I, I, I was one of those guys like pulling the, pulling the dirt out and saying, you can't leave this much dirt around your house. If you hired a maid, if you hired a maid and they left this much dirt around the house, you would fire them. Fire this vacuum cleaner and bring in mine. <laughs> uh, I, I was a really good salesperson up until I found out what price my, the, the owner of the office bought the machines for. Once, once I figured out that there was an $800 delta between the 200 that he paid it for and the thousand I was selling them for, I, I, anyway, I couldn't sell after that. Did you have one of those like A4 massively like blown up, it was like zoomed in by 2,000 times and it was laminated, I remember Bertie's was laminated, it was a photograph of a, of a creature that was terrifying, it was actually a dust mite, but it was like zoomed in A4 and he would like get on your bed and vacuum it and then he'd bring out the A4 laminated thing and says, this is living in your bed. You know, I'm pretty sure that Stephen <laughs> sold Kirby vacuum cleaner. <laughs> he, he probably has the Kirby songbook uh, at home. You know, there's a yeah, I find that so encouraging, Glenn. <laughs> We've all got a past. Glenn, I, I, I'm not going to dip into the... Uh, is there anything else you want to say in, in closing? Um, I'll, I'll give you the last word, and, and then we, we thank you for coming. No, you know, it's... Um, you know, I, I, one, it's, it's been a great event. Thank you so much for inviting me and, and, and allowing us to, to come and, and uh, you know, talk about our experience um, in building and getting EXP to where it is today. Um, you know, the fact is, you know, 1,200 agents is, you know, in South Africa, but really, you know, internationally, we're still very, very small. And even if I, the total number of agents in all of South Africa, I think, was 40, about 40,000. Um, but if you think about it, EXP is a worldwide company. It's not a company where you have 40,000 total you know, market potential. Uh, you have a market potential of 20 million people. And when you start to think about, if you do get excited about the growth of, uh, and, and the rev share side of this, and by the way, m you know, 80% of agents don't really get excited about that. They're just, they love to be around the positivity of EXP and they go out and they list and sell properties. That's what they do. That's what they enjoy doing. And that's what actually makes EXP work is the actually going out and listing and selling properties. But if you say, hey, I want to actually do this expansion thing, you know, it's a business expense. You can go to Dubai and you call it a business expense. You can come to the United States and call it a business expense. And we got, you know, there's some cool places to visit along the way. You obviously, talk to your tax accountant as to what you can or can't deduct. But, you know, it, you're, you're in a business that actually allows you to do a lot more things uh, than you would ever be able to do in a traditional estate agency. 
And um, so just, you know, as your mind expands, this, you know, if you're not, if you don't have EXP insomnia yet, well, I don't know where you were the last couple of days, but, um, but you know, this, this you know, I, I love building this business. I love all the partnerships, all the relationships that I've built over the years. Um, I mean, we are all partners. Sometimes we don't all agree on, on, on everything, but we all know the mission of the company that's true, and that's to change agents' lives, and that's what we do every day, and that's why I keep on doing this. Well, Glenn, we so appreciate you being here. Bless you. Thank you. Please come back to South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Sanford.